Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is George Mesteshan. I'm from DLR. I'm a researcher, robotics researcher, working on motion planning and control for humanoid robots. Over the past 10 years at DLR, we developed uh, and built this uh, humanoid robot. It's called TORO, which stands for Tor Controlled Humanoid Robot. And uh, this year, after 10 years in the lab, we took it outside for the first time. And this is what we got. Okay, video not playing. So as you can see, we can walk on grass, a bit uneven terrain. And I'm going to tell you today a bit about uh, how we do it. So we have a torque control robot, so we need to give some commanded work. And uh, we start with a reference trajectory generation, where we generate the following signals from top to bottom, the center of mass trajectory, the hip orientation, and for the right and left foot, the trajectory, which we use a, a fifth order polynomial to generate that. For the center mass trajectory, we use the divergent component of motion. And a bit later, Johannes is going to give us more details on how we generate the trajectory. From the robot, we get the joint positions. And from the IMU, we get the orientation and the angular velocity. We have four stroke sensors in the feet but we do not use them in the control loop. We also do not use vision currently, so all the walking that you're, you saw already, and I'm going to show another video later, is completely blind. The robot does not look ahead, does not know what the terrain is, just walks, assumes a level ground, and everything else is compliant behavior. From the state estimation, we get the center mass position, hip orientation, uh, foot position, the actual values, and we plug everything in into a compliant control. Uh, the output of the compliant control, it's a wrench. A wrench is a six-dimensional vector containing force and torques. And uh, the impedance for the center mass is a spring damper, a virtual spring damper, with a similar formula like this for a translational spring damper, and we can also define easily um, rotational spring damper. We have the center mass impedance and the feet impedance, right and left. Additionally, we have feet forward terms, which give us much better tracking the behavior. So we have a range for the center mass feet forward terms, and we have torque uh, feet forward. Mm, we compute the ground reaction forces with a constrained quadratic programming where we take into account the center mass task and we apply standard contact uh, constraints, unilaterality, maximum normal force, center pressure in the foot, and so on. And we get uh, wrenches for the ground reaction force in the left and the right foot. And finally, we put everything together. We compute the torques simply by mapping the wrenches to the torques using the Jacobian transpose and adding the torque fit forward what we computed earlier. And that's it. Nothing more than, than this. Looks relatively simple, but it's, uh, it's quite, uh, quite powerful. And it's so powerful that we uh, managed to also work on compliant terrain. That's it. On behalf of Toro, I thank you for your attention. Okay, we have several minutes for questions.
Yes. I noticed in your control diagram there was nothing with respect to detecting contact states and reacting on that. Do you speak a little bit about how you handle so with the contact transitions uh, are planned. We do not use the contact force measured by the force or sensor. And the only thing which we need to take care of is the transition from impedance to ground reaction point. So we take care that the transition is continuous. So when the twin foot is moving, you would have an impedance wrench strike on the foot, and the moment it becomes in contact, not in reality, but in the reference trajectory, you need to switch to the QP. So the QP will compute the forces. We we adjust the constraints of the two pieces such that the whole range is continuous throughout the transition. That even if the foot is not actually made to contact with the ground, because of this continuous transition, it will make the contact uh, everything we can see. Uh, Joe Darby from Carnegie Mellon. It seems like the ankles are doing a lot of work here. Is that something that just comes out of your natural control formulation, or is that something that you're specifically trying to do? No. It, um, the reason for when we walked on grass, um, the reason the ankles were wobbling a bit is because we only compute wrench uh, force for as a ground reaction force. So the whole task for the foot, for the, the leg, is a force task. There is no task to stabilize it. In the second video on the mattress, we added a damping term to the ankle so that it's not that wobble as much. It's just a little bit because of the compliance of the Completely on that, but it's much more stable. We didn't have that in the first uh, In the back over here. Uh, Alex from Max Planck Institute. The, so, so the bombing was basically part of the question, but let me say the transition is, is fine as long as you still get this, this, this gradient in the range. What happens if you do that movement much, much faster? Would, would you have problems because you're expected and, and you have the perturbation? Does, does it change? Yes, sense? that's a, a limit. You cannot go extremely fast. The fastest way we manage the higher step frequency is one step per second, okay. 40 extreme centimeter step. And indeed, that's one of the limiting factors that the contact is not stable, while the QP is assuming a stable contact, so you would have. Uh, so how, would you, how would you solve that? Well, one of the solutions is, is foot stabilization, where even if the foot is not in contact, you can have a damping wrench on it to prevent it from wobble or sudden motion. And uh, we also want to use the upper body. In all these videos, or two videos, we do not use the upper body for balancing. So the upper body just has a poster cut in the joint space, and we do not use it for improving the sense of pressure, stability, and this we want to do in the next. So this would also help. Okay. Andy? Uh, a really technical question. Is, uh, can you say how fast the various control loops are running? Yes. Uh, we have, um, just, for, uh, just to make it so it's not robotic, just for comparison. <coughs> yes. The um, control that I shown runs in one kilohertz. So one which, which this is uh, this one. So this control loop is one kilohertz. Every millisecond, one input. Yes, but we have a low-level joint controller which takes the commanded task and uh, tracks the commanded task. So the torque, the commanded torque, and tracks them. And this runs at three kilohertz. So it has torque sensors and generates these torques. Uh, three kilohertz. So it's about. 200 times faster than a person. Yeah, because of the hardware. Okay, in the, in the back over here, and then have the next speaker, uh, Morgan. So I'm guessing your aim is to make total function even better when it's walking. How do you think that small feet play a role in that? Uh, the small feet are a limiting factor because the central pressure uh, moves quickly to, to the edge of the feet, and the, the faster you walk, the more central, pre central pressure movement within the foot you have. And uh, this was a design decision that we took right at the beginning to have small feet because it's more challenging. 
but uh, at the same time it helps us if we want to do stair climbing. Yeah. And also when we turn, we do not step on our yes. So foot step planning is easier with more. Are there disadvantages associated with having a small footprint? Well, the center of pressure it has less trouble. So the faster you walk, these feet forward turns that I talked quickly about, they will make the center of pressure move more around them. The faster you walk. Currently, a limiting factor, but using the upper body, we hope to, to compensate for that. Okay, so this and this. Uh, and that is it. Your hands. So, right now, yeah. we don't do step adjustments, which is quite tricky. Like, fixed timing, no step adjustments. <coughs> and this over a mattress is just quite hard. If you try this, it's really hard. So, uh, maybe with time adjustments and, and step adjustments. Okay, great. Uh, so we have to move on to the next one, but let's thank him again.